Spider-Man 2 is the most underwhelming project from both this company and this IP since Spider-Man Far From Home. Spider-Man is my favorite superhero of all time. Screw it. Four days out of seven, he is my favorite fictional character ever. I grew up with Insomniac. Insomniac is my childhood. Spyro and Ratchet are everything to me. In fact, the other three out of seven days, my favorite fictional character is Ratchet. Ratchet and Clank A Crack in Time is the best game to be created for the PS3 generation. This has nothing to do with anything. I just really freaking love that game. Anyways, I say this because I do not come at Spider-Man 2 with ill intent. I have an unbelievable love for the developers and their IP they're using. Spider-Man 1 begins with Peter going through normal life problems, but then the police are moving in on the Kingpin. Spider-Man jumps into action and takes down one of his biggest criminals in New York City. Spider-Man 2 begins with Peter going through normal life, but a great threat emerges. Peter and Miles must take out Sandman, one of the biggest criminals in New York City. Peter works with his mentor, Otto Octavius, to do science stuff. Harry comes back from the dead and gives him a job where they do science stuff together. A new gang emerges, led by Mr. Negative. They cause chaos throughout New York City. A new gang emerges, led by Craven. They cause chaos throughout New York City. Mr. Negative hunts down Spider-Man's most dangerous foes and creates an unstoppable team to take down Spider-Man. Craven hunts down Spider-Man's most dangerous foes to find out if they are strong enough to take him down. The real threat emerges. Mr. Negative was just a pawn and the real villain was your mentor, the character you've spent the most time getting to know. Otto Octavius is Dr. Octopus. The real threat emerges. Craven has found his final hunt. The real villain is your best friend, the character you've spent the most time getting to know. Harry Osborne is Venom. Dr. Octopus makes his way to Times Square and releases the bioweapon Devil's Breath. The entire city is in danger. Venom makes his way to Times Square and has a final showdown with Craven killing him. Venom monologues about curing the world and plans on turning the entire world into symbiotes. The entire world is in danger. Spider-Man confronts Dr. Octopus and saves the world, but not without great consequence. He loses his mentor Otto, and to save the city, must watch Aunt May die. Peter's hardest decision he has ever made. Peter has changed a lot from the start of the game. He has learned a lot. Spider-Man confronts Venom and saves the world from being turned into symbiotes. No one was hurt in the process. Even Harry, who Dr. Connors said would have to die to kill Venom, lives. There was no consequences to any of Peter's actions or anything that happened in the story. Spider-Man 2 ends with Peter in the same spot he was at the start of the game. After credits show Harry Osborn is alive and is in a tank with the symbiote. Seems there are big plans for Spider-Man 2. After credits show Norman talking to Otto about who Spider-Man is because now he hates Spider-Man even though his son is still alive. Seems they have some dumbass plans for Spider-Man 3. Venom is Peter's most dangerous villain. Venom is a very personal villain. Sure you can have Venom want to turn the world into symbiotes, but at the end of the day, we don't care. Venom is two sides of a coin. On one side is the symbiote that grows to hate Peter because he does not want to be one with it. And on the other, the man that hates Peter just as much as Venom because of some reason. Venom wants Peter to suffer. Venom will kill everyone Peter loves and make him watch and still even then will not kill him. Even though Venom knows his identity, he would rather use this knowledge to torment Peter and let the world know. Venom is Spider-Man if Peter let the symbiote take over. Venom has all the power Peter wants and Peter must overcome this with the power he's been given. It is his responsibility. Venom is not just about just a great responsibility. Venom is also about with great power comes great consequences. After all, he created Venom. In Spider-Man 2, Harry Osborn shows zero symptoms of the symbiote even being attached to him during the entire lead up 
to giving the symbiote to Peter. No increased aggression, nothing. When Peter gets the suit, it feels forced. This stab wound would have never, ever killed Peter. They should have had Craven break Peter's back or something similar to give a reason for the symbiote to jump onto Peter in the first place. This would have also made Craven feel like an actual threat because if you look in the background, he is getting his ass beaten by Harry, who has barely had the symbiote for long at all. Then, once Peter gets the suit, Bully Maguire emerges immediately. Harry shows more anger without the suit because he is dying, and then once he finally gets the suit back, he turns into Venom immediately for no reason besides because that's what the plot wants to do now. There is absolutely no reason on Harry's end besides being weak-willed in this moment for him to turn into Venom. Then the symbiote proceeds to pretend to be his mum, says they can cure the world by turning everyone into symbiotes. You just turned Venom into every cliche villain for no reason at all. And you are able to have this be Venom's primary goal, but not at the expense of everything else. Harry as Venom never ever torments Peter. We have one scene as Harry as Venom, and all he does is turn Mary Jane into Scream for five seconds. How did you get you Doc Ock so right in Spider-Man 1? Up. That's because men like us have a duty, a responsibility to use our talents in the service of others. Even if they don't appreciate it, we have to do what's best for those beneath us, whether they understand it or not. No, you're wrong. You are everything I wanted to be. This is how you fix Spider-Man 2. All you had to do is have another scene where symbiote Spider-Man kills Norman. Presumably, Harry then hates Peter. You have a reason for him to become Venom. You then up the screen time of Venom to be more tormenting Peter, making his life a living hell. You can still keep the storyline of taking over the world with symbiotes, and then Harry is still living out his dream of saving the world, but without Peter this time. Peter has to now make the tough choice of killing Harry because as Dr. Connors said, you have to kill the host to stop Venom. Now, instead of Norman being forced to hate Spider-Man at the end of the game for no reason, just because you want him to become Green Goblin, in the after credits scene in my story, we see Norman's last moments, and we see that he survives whatever encounter he had with symbiote Spider-Man using the G serum. He now most definitely hates Spider-Man now, because he just tried to kill him and killed Harry. Spider-Man 2 has one phenomenal side story and a few droplets of refreshing, friendly neighborhood quests. The rest are basic Ubisoft objectives. Even in this said phenomenal mission, it ends with a cliffhanger to set up DLC or a third game. But it doesn't even make sense. Why is the Carnage symbiote traveling in this train in the first place. Anyways, Spider-Man 1 had the same problem as well, but then in Spider-Man 2, they just gave the game less side quests. They made it worse. Spider-Man 2 should have had at least three or four, honestly maybe five more side stories like this, which I guarantee it did, but most likely were turned into DLC. These basic Ubisoft side quests are totally fine existing, but should not be our mainstay side content for the game, and should be there to only add to the experience of the world being alive. And there should be way more of it. This game feels like it's stuck in the past, opposed to Tears of the Kingdom, which came out earlier this year. Spider-Man 2's entire sweep of side content is equivalent to Tears the Kingdom's Korok Seed Hunt alone. I would be able to finish all of Spider-Man 2's side content twice over, and I would still be collecting Korok Seeds in Tears of the Kingdom. That's not good. If Spider-Man 2's story was released first, 
Maybe it would have been the genre-defining game it wants to be, but following up Spider-Man 1 story, it just isn't possible. Spider-Man 1 is a genre-defining masterclass in both storytelling and gameplay, and Spider-Man 2 is just a sequel to said masterpiece.